Hello parents, I'm going to talk you through a phonics PowerPoint explaining some of the key words that we would use during phonics lessons at school and to give you a little bit more support on homeschooling your children in phonics. Why do we teach phonics? Phonics is a way of teaching children to read quickly and skillfully. They're taught how to recognise the sounds that each individual letter makes. They identify the sounds that different combinations of letters make, such as sh or u or ah, and they blend these sounds together from left to right to make a word. Children can then use this knowledge to decode new words that they hear or see. And this is the first important step in learning to read. And it's really important that we get phonics right for our youngest children as this will give them really good foundations for reading as they move through school. During a typical phonics lesson, we use lots of different terminology and we encourage the children to use these words as well. The children love using big words and feel really special when they can use it in their own sentences. So, a phoneme. This is a single spoken sound. For example, in the word apple, a is a single phoneme. Sh is a phoneme in shell. There are 44 common sounds in the English language that can be made up of one or more letters. A grapheme is a letter or a sequence of letters that represents a phoneme. And graphemes are what we write down. So a phoneme is what we hear and a grapheme is what we write. Blending. Blending letter sounds together enables children to identify and decode words when reading. So you would sound out d or g and they blend it together to say dog. Segmenting is the opposite to this. Segmenting letter sounds means to break a word down into its phonemes, into the smallest sounds. Dog would be segmented to say d o g. So the segmenting process breaks it down, the blending process puts the word back together. Here is a typical progression in phonics across school. So if you have a child in reception, the first six weeks they would be focusing on phase two. Then for 12 weeks they will be focusing on phase three. And then for four to six weeks they'll be focusing at phase four. Ideally, by the end of reception, all children would be secure at phase four. However, we know this isn't always possible so we support your child at whichever phase they are working at and we'll do additional work or extra practice to make sure that they catch up. In an ideal world, we would like all children in year one to be working at phase five. Now we understand that there may be some gaps there at previous phases, but we consolidate this through teaching all of the phonemes and graphemes together at phase five. Year two, children will be focusing on phase six. And this is a big element to support for spelling. So they will look at lots of different alternative spellings and ways of spelling words and the rules for the spelling patterns. Now I'm going to talk you through the different phases from two to five and tell you the sounds and the tricky words and high frequency words they will learn each phase. Now, 
it's really important to consider the position of sounds in words. So, for example, this digraph here, and the digraph, and the digraph, and will normally come at the end of the word or syllable. So, if they hear a sound like in duck, they know to use the digraph instead of a or a because of the position in the word. These are the tricky words at phase two. Now, a tricky word is a word that cannot be sounded out because the letters written down do not match the sounds heard. I, the, to, no, go, into. And over here, the green words are high frequency decodable words. So all of these words can be decoded and sounded out through blending and segmenting. A, dad, mum, back, as, bid, up, but, at, and, put, of, it, got, had, if, is, on, his, off, in, not, him, let, an, can, has, am, get big. Now, to start with, we would encourage the children to segment and blend these words with their reading. So instead of expecting them to read big, they would say big, big. And then eventually the children will have seen this word enough times to know that when these three letters are together, the word is big. But if your child comes across a word they cannot read straight away, ask them to segment it and sound it out and then blend it back together. So another example would be h, a, d, had. Now these are the sounds for phase three. And as you can see, we are starting to get quite a lot of sounds where two letters are working together. This is what we call a digraph. If two letters are working together to make one sound, it is called a digraph. If three letters are working together to make one sound, it is called a trigraph. So here we have j, w, x, y, z, z, qu, ch, sh, ng, a, e, i, O, O, U, R, O, E, Ow, Oi, Ear, Bear, Ewer, Er. As you can see, these two sounds look very similar. OK, the children in school are taught that the short sound for book and cook and took, OK, is a short sound, like a uh sound. When you are looking at words like moon or zoo or boot, it is a long oo sound. OK, and we would talk about this with the children. So there's a short sound and a long sound. And again, just like phase two, there are tricky words and high frequency decodable words for phase three. So he is tricky because it, the e here is not making the normal e sound. It is making an e, but it's not represented like an e. So we've got he, she, we, me, be, was, you, they, all, are, my, her. 
and the decodable words we've got will, now, that, down, this, look, then, to, them, with, see, for. Now at phase four, there are no new sounds to learn. The purpose of phase four is to consolidate the children's knowledge of phoneme and grapheme correspondence in reading. However, there are more tricky words and decodable words for the children to learn. So the tricky words we have are said, have, like, so, do, some, come, were, there, little, when, out, what, and one. And it's really important to try and explore what the tricky bit is about each word. For example, said, if we were to segment it, s, e, d, the s and the d are represented using sounds that they know. It is this bit in the middle that is represented using a different set of letters. The same with some, s or m. Mm. So the s and m mm are represented correctly, but the o and the e are the tricky bits. If we can talk about the rules with the children, it allows them to understand why it is tricky, which will help them to learn the words quicker. Then the decodable words we have at phase four, we've got went, it's just from children and help. Now here are the sounds for phase five. Some of these sounds the children will have already been able to say. However, at phase five, it is a different grapheme. So they are writing it down differently. And again, it's really important to think about the position of these graphemes in words. So we've got A, OW, I, E, OI, U, uh, O, W, U, O, O, E, A, E, I, O, U. Now these last five sounds, we call them split digraphs because the E we already know as a digraph, but it has been split and another letter will drop in the middle. Okay, so the children will refer to these graphemes as split digraphs. And here are the tricky words for phase five. O, oh, there, people, Mr, Mrs, looked, called, asked, could. And the decodable words, don't, old, I'm, by, time, house, about, your, day, made, came, make, my, here, saw, and very. Okay, so the decodable word here can still be broken down, but sometimes they are broken down by using an alternative spelling. This is why phase five takes the whole of the year one time to learn all the alternative spellings and pronunciations. So here is a typical lesson structure to help you structure your phonics lesson during homeschooling. So we would spend about two to three minutes revisiting and quickly recalling the phonemes taught so far using flashcards. Now, I understand you may not have flashcards at home, but your teachers are doing daily videos on YouTube and showing you the flashcards so the children can join in with the revisit here. 
Then we would spend around seven minutes teaching the reading process, introducing a new phoneme for all of the children to say it. Saying it is a really important part of helping your child to read. Then we would look at reading the words with flashcards using this new phoneme. And then we would read the, with the sound buttons first, blending and segmenting, and then without sound buttons as a whole word. In phonics, repetition is really important. The more children repeat it and get to say it, the quicker they will be at recalling it. Then we will spend about seven minutes writing. So we would look at modeling how to write the phoneme first and then look at applying it to words. Using whiteboards or paper at home, children record the sounds they can hear in given words. So we would ask the children to write a word down. So if we were, for example, using the shh phoneme, we would say words like shop. So the children will write down sh op. We might then ask them to write shell. And we'd expect them to sound the word out and write down the sounds they could hear. Sh -e then at the end of the lesson, we would play a game with the children. And there are some games that you can use online to help with this, like buried treasure, picture matching, sentence and picture matching, or writing a sentence with a given word. The application is really important to make sure the children have understood their new phoneme and grapheme and can apply it to words and sentences. Here are some ways that you can help your child at home. Encourage them to use their sounds and actions to find the sound they need. Children can practice their phonics by playing games online. They particularly like games called Buried Treasure, Poop Deck Pirates and Picnic on Pluto. Now these games all involve real and alien words. This helps to support them in the phonics check in year one. A real word is a word that we would use every day. An alien word is a word that has been made up and isn't used every day. Remember, phonics is not the only way you become a good reader. Continue to read with your child each night and encourage them to sound out, reread to check it makes sense and use pictures for clues. Ask questions about the book. And most importantly, remember to enjoy reading. If you have any questions about phonics, please email Miss Lee at earlyphase at eastfieldpry.co.uk and she can help you answer any of your questions or concerns. In the meantime, keep on looking on our school YouTube account so that you can see the daily phonics lessons your teachers are providing for your children. And hopefully you have found this information useful and you will understand a little bit more of how we teach phonics in school.